I'm going to show you how to calculate distances by creating vector buffers. Let's start with a simple example of points. So I've got my points feature class here and if I go to the um, Arc Toolbox for proximity and I can select my buffer tool. I can then select the points that I want to use for that and I will select the um, distances that I'm interested in so let's call it uh, 2000 meters and note you can change the units if you want and I'm going to ask it to dissolve the boundaries I click OK it will go and think about that for a moment and then it will come up with my buffers. There they are. So uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. So you've created these polygons. They're in a new data file that's been created so you can do with them what you want. You can use them for display. You can use them for analysis. Uh, a couple more things to show you here or to point out. One is that I could have created those buffers just around selected points, not all of them. If I'd use say something like select by attributes first, it would only create the buffers around the features that have been selected. I can also create multiple ring buffers. And so here I'm going to select my input features to be points again. And so the difference here is that of course we can specify a uh, range of distances to use. So I can type in say um, thousand meters click the plus sign and that adds it to my list and then I can say 2,000 meters but they don't have to be equal intervals I could for example pick one here let's just to be different we'll make it 3,500 just to show you that these can be whatever you want them to be and I'm going to click OK so this will take a couple of seconds to calculate as it's actually generating multiple buffers for each of my rings. And again, as with many features in or tools in ArcGIS, uh, again, I could have just done it on a selection, but I've chosen to do it on the entire thing. So I was thinking about it. continues to think about it and there we go. Well that's quite the color scheme that ArcGIS has given to us. Okay well you get the idea we have now got our concentric buffers with the distances that I specified around the uh, the points. So one other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, buffer by attribute. So if I look at my lines here and let's open the attribute table for these and you'll notice that I have a field called buffer. Now I, I've entered that data. I could have called it distance or whatever I want. There's nothing special about that name. But under it, you'll notice that I've specified a different buffer distance for different types of roads. So uh, if we were measuring something like noise pollution or air pollution that has a distance decay factor to it, in other words, it decreases, decreases the farther away you are, so we would have a larger distance for major, uh, like a highway or a major road. We'd have a slightly less distance. Minor road would have a less distance again. So now we've got three different distances for three different types of lines in my feature class. I can use the buffer tool again. And now what I'm going to do is tell it to not use a linear unit, but I'm going to use a uh, field that I've specified, and that will be my buffer field. So I select my lines as input, I select field as output. I could dissolve these boundaries, but in this case I'm not going to, just so that you're able to see uh, it, things a little more clearly. So uh, I have to choose my field. Let's use buffer here. Select OK. So it's the same buffer uh, feature I was using before, but let me just... Um, change the symbology here so it's easier to see and if I use a red outline 
you'll be able to tell that the buffer distance has been customized or tailored to the different sized lines uh, based on the attributes, the fact we have highways at 3,000, major roads at 2,000, and so on. So that's it for buffering by attributes. So we've been able to create regular buffers, we can do uh, multiple ring buffers, and in this case we're doing a buffer by a field value.